Awesome. Aloha, everybody. It's Mark Soyachu with the Christian Surfers Podcast Talk Story, second episode. And uh, we got a very special guest uh, online today, Pastor Robbie O'Brien. What's up, buddy? Where are you at right now? What's happening? I'm hanging out in my office today at uh, in Ormond Beach on the east coast of Florida. So, yeah, hanging out nice. there. And um, we're not far from the water. Can't quite see it from my window, but close. Very cool. Do you have Do you have an ocean view from the church? Can you Can you check the waves? No, not from not from where we're sitting. I have to I'd have to go out and walk about a hundred feet or so, and in a couple buildings in the way. But we're close. That's aw- That's awesome, Robbie. Now, with a name like Salty Church for your church, uh, I'm assuming there's a few surfers that go there. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's it. Uh, a lot of people call it a surfer church, for sure. But we're to the point now where, you know, it's very surfer friendly, but a lot of people come from a lot of diverse places and all that. But definitely um, when I, we do, when I talk surf church, surf stories, we show surf videos, there's a lot of people that really appreciate it. So it's good. Yeah. That's awesome, Robbie. Now, did you, did you start the church and did you pick the name? Yeah, I did. Um, we started, it was uh, 2005 and um yeah, we're trying to figure out what we're doing and how to do it. And uh, this word salty kept coming back for it's a long story, but the short version of it, you know, Matthew 5, Jesus says you're the salt of the earth. Um, you know, he goes on to talk about you're the light of the world. You know, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. And uh, Florida doesn't have any hills, so we couldn't use like salty light on a hill church. So, uh, but we got the beach and <laughs> Jesus said, uh, you are the salt, um, salt of the earth. And we're the beach were salty and so yeah it just kept sticking with us and um you know also too jesus gave a command it was early on in acts acts one um you'll be my witnesses to the ends of the earth right judice judy yeah uh, jerusalem judy and the ends of the earth the ends of the earth is the beach it's where the water hits the sand so we, we we're at the ends of the of this part of the earth anyways and we're salty and it's just a part of who we are that's awesome, Robbie. Uh, how how are the waves right now for you, and how, what's the weather doing out there? Uh, it got it got flat today, um, but last week I had three good days of surf last week, so we had a decent swell come in, and uh, I had one day it was a full four and a half hours in the water last week, and so that was it got as good as probably head high and um, just offshore. And so three days last week, that's a good week for us for sure. Today, not so good, but that's okay. We'll take what we can get. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, secret spot, Florida. And if you're out there on the East Coast, make sure you check out Salty Church with uh, with Pastor Robbie. And you you guys got a couple locations, correct? Yeah. Um, physical locations uh, is four. So we're in um, New Smyrna Beach, big hot spot for surfing. Uh, we're in Flagler Beach, which is just north of us, killer little surf town, just a little bit north of us. And we're in Palm Coast as well as Ormond Beach. So four physical locations and uh, beach church trying to reach a beach people. And um, so far, so good. It's working. I love that, Robbie. Well, get get salty with Robbie at Salty Church. Now, Robbie, you, you alluded uh, a little bit to some of the conditions in Florida uh, that it can be sometimes. And so... Um, you know, what I love about Christian surfers is that, you know, it's very inclusive and we're just trying to reach anybody that loves uh, the water culture and is part of the beach communities and you don't have to surf a specific craft. And I know we talked about this the other day, but what's, what's your favorite tool to get that, get out there in the ocean with? Yeah. So over the last five, six years or so, I've been all stand up all the time, almost a hundred percent of the time. Um, Several years ago, I ditched the shortboard, and, uh, you know, basically for our conditions here, especially in this, you know, in any place when it gets flat, what do you do? And so, you know, when it gets real small, I've got a, I got a nine, six stand up that I can turn like crazy. It's my, one of my favorite boards, but then when it gets bigger, I've got a couple other, you know, I'm riding a, um, seven O Nash, uh, when it's decent. Okay. So, and then I've got a one, one board I tend to travel with, so. We go to a Christian Surfers Conference, whether it's France or Panama, or Australia, or whatever. I'll take that one. It's a 710 Nash, pretty traditional shape, and I can ride up to as big as my head will let me go. So, but uh, you know, like I'm in the, I'm in Costa Rica a lot, so it'll be two, three, over, two, three feet overhead, and I'll ride that one when it gets 
legit. But awesome, right? You gotta have a tool for everything. You gotta be prepared. You can't just stop writing, right? You gotta be ready. That's right. You gotta have your quiver. There you go. So you don't have to be a short border to join Christian Surfers. You can stand up paddle with Robbie. You can body surf. You can body board. Whatever you guys want to do, um, all are welcome. And as as our international director Roy Harley always says, you can uh, you can belong before you believe. So very inclusive community. Thanks for repping the. Uh, that's it. That's it. Thanks for repping the SUP crew in CS, Robbie. Now, I think I'm trying to think when we, the first time we met, I, I want to say I was probably back 2014, six or seven years ago in Costa Rica at the Christian Surface Conference. I mean, I know you go there a lot anyway, um, but I think was that your first CS event or conference that you attended? I think the first international conference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Coast Rica is my passion, and that's what we do. And um, so we were able to help at that conference. So yeah, I think it was fourteen. And then um, yeah, I was yep. telling my wife about meeting you, meeting you in um, sixteen in Australia. And you're chasing that's after right. you're chasing after this young little girl that was kind of trying to. <laughs> she, was, she was trying to get away from. I the, still am. Yeah, <laughs> you were you were you were chasing her around, and and it was in Australia. I think that things started to kind of turn for you a little bit. And I remember, I remember some conversation about that. And now we got a baby. That's like it's epic, you know. That's it. That's right, baby Luana. You were you you've got two jobs, Robbie. You're you're Cupid on the side, like the you know. No, the, I, I didn't do anything. I was the just Holy there. Spirit I was Cupid. Cupid. I was just witness <laughs> to it all. That's all good. Uh, praise God. We're still, yeah, that's a really cool story. I remember that now. We were looking at this world map. It was the first time Lydia and I met. We were in Australia for the international conference that year. Uh, we had met two years before in Costa Rica. We were there looking at this world map, and you were telling us where your church was in Florida. and uh, or I was, I was showing people where I was from in California. She was in the Canaries, and then right smack in the middle was you in Florida. So that was uh, that was a real cool moment. Thanks for... Uh, helping me get married, buddy. I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, awesome. Funny. Well, you, 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 you and Jesus. Yeah, give, I'll give the credit to you and Jesus. That's who gets it. Um, now, tell tell me a little bit about tell me a little bit more about your role with Christian Surfers for for anyone that that doesn't know. Um, I, you've been to a couple conferences. You're a head pastor, founder for for Salty Church, which is awesome. But within Christian Surfers, I know you got a couple things going on. Can you? Do, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I try to keep it short, but uh, I think it goes back to 2002, actually. Um, man, that's a long time ago. Um, I was doing youth ministry and um, here, and I moved to town, and I um, uh, was talking to one of my youth sponsors, and we're like, man, we need a serpent ministry. And, you know, it's early days of the internet kind of stuff, and it's like, I don't know what it means, but we need to have a surf ministry. It'd be a cool part of what we do. We're living at the beach, and... So I was talking to my friend and I was like, hey, and I started doing some web search and boom, it popped up Christian Surfers. I'm like, I don't know what this is, but we should do it and make it a part of our ministry. And um, that was, the guy I was talking to was Cal Fisher. He was, he was, uh, he was my legend. best middle Cal. school youth sponsor. And so he went out That's and so cool. met up with somebody and learned about Christian Surfers. He's like, dude, we need to start a chapter. And so it was way back then we started a chapter of Christian Surfers Daytona Beach as a part of the youth ministry. And then um, a couple years later in 05, we ended up starting the church. And then that chapter kind of helped us even launch our church to a certain extent. And so for, wow. a, long, so for a long time, Cal was the, uh, the leader of Christian Service Daytona Beach. I was the pastor of the church. We partnered together. And then probably about that, even probably did, yeah, a little before that, we started doing some trips to Costa Rica and it was, um, in 2010, I believe, 2009, I went to Costa Rica and met a guy named Dennis. And um, Cal and I were there doing a right. trip and like, hey, we need to partner up and do something. He's doing Christian servers. And then eventually he ends up planting, on. planting a church. And it was just from there, just living it out here locally. Is it, was it Pier Vida? Was that yeah. when he was planting Pier Vida? No, it started out. He was just doing um, Christian servers, um, Costa Rica. So, so when, wow. he, when he started, Such it was a cool all story. a bunch of kids in his living room doing Christian surfer right. stuff. And then little by little, it morphed into a church 
help him in his partnership between Christian servers and, and uh, the local church that began to grow out of that. And then from there, there's a big story that's involved with it. It's really fun. That is, that is so cool. Further your, to further your legacy and roots in, in uh, Costa Rica. You get a, I, I know you guys are closed too, so you could probably just retire in both places. <laughs> that, uh, sounds good to me. Awesome, Robbie. Good stuff, man. And you've also got uh, something that you're a part of and, and the chairman for, I believe, uh, called the Church Surf Collective, which is uh, kind of a, a network under Christian surfers. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so um, because of Costa Rica, especially in a Latin American culture, we begin to find out that there are Christians and surfers that get together and they do things, even have chapters of Christian surfers. Um, but the local church is not accepting of the surf culture, especially in Latin America. We know that to be true. And so because of that, mm. that's one of the reasons why Dennis began to start his own ministry, because there was no place for his kids to go to, the ones he was reaching at the beach. Um, and so there's this, you know, the Christian service is doing a great job of doing outreach, but there are times when there is no church that will even let them show up. I mean, Dennis was... 18 years old, he's a champ, you know, national champion surfer, and he becomes a Christian through miraculous circumstances, and the local pastor there said, you cannot be a surfer and a Christian. And so the national Crazy. champion of Costa Rica quits surfing because he believes it's contrary to what God wants. And that, wow. that would make a lot of us go crazy. Like, are you kidding me? And <laughs> it, it's been a passion of a lot of people to kind of address that. And so yeah. Dennis got me connected with a guy named Pano. Pano was um, leading Christian surfers Tamarindo in Costa Rica. We started meeting him with him and supporting him. And then little by little, same thing. There's no church. So it was able, we were able to morph that to where now there's, there's 10 or more, probably closer to 15, worshiping communities in Costa Rica because of all of that that started back 10, 12 years ago. And it's been in a close connection with Christian surfers. So one of the things is over the years, we're like, Christian surfers, you've got this problem. you got to do something. And finally, when Roy uh, became the, the international director, he came through our town, and I was telling him the story. And he was like, quit complaining about it. Do something. So um, <laughs> I'm like, all right, you need to go to Australia, and you need to show up and start making this happen. And so he really encouraged it not to um, – we call mission drift. We don't want to take away from the mission of Costa Rica, but start something else to address the problem. If the um, right. Christian surfers is a, is a bridge between the church and the beach, if there's only half a bridge, there's a problem. If there's no church to accept them, then what Christian surfers does is incomplete. So right. in Australia, we begin to give birth to this idea. Now it's become its own thing. And so uh, the Surf Church Collective is a group of people who want to answer that problem is what if there is no church? So let's help formulate that. Okay. Let's complete the bridge. And so we've begun the Surf Church Collective and it's, it's not underneath Christian surfers. It's, it's a partnership alongside, uh, Christian surfers international has been extremely generous in saying, Hey, whatever you need to make that happen and to solve that problem, we're going to help you do it. And so we want to really work seamlessly together as a separate organization, but working to complete the mission God has given us. And so that's really been my passion since, well, before 16, but officially in 2016 at that Australia conference that we've been putting this together. And uh, now we've got a whole team. Um, and technically I'm like chairman of this now, but really Richard Ellington is now the face of Christians, uh, the Surf Church Collective. Um, yeah. Man, awesome that, guy. that poor guy got stuck in South Africa, right? With this uh, coronavirus. And so, yeah, I don't know how that happened. It's, just, it's a cruel joke, though, because he got stuck in one of the best surf spots on the planet. So you can't complain, right? Except the local government won't let him surf. So it's a yep. you can't it's, surf. <laughs> uh, he was sending pictures picture out a few days ago about these epic, you know, right handers just peeling and peeling and peeling, and they're having to watch it. And nobody's riding it. Anyways, so he's he's suffering. Empty waves. He's yeah, up, he's, it's almost like what's what's worse? Would you rather be just stuck in the desert as a surfer and not see anything, 
or be stuck in a perfect place like Rich and his family and and having that that care that temptation right in front of your face yes it, i mean he's suffering there's no doubt about it uh but he he's becoming the pain he's really given up his ministry and devoted himself now full-time to the collective and uh is beginning up until the virus hit He's uh, working on traveling and, and generating some more support and awareness about what's going on. And um, and so he's really gotcha. become the face of that. And so my job is now supporting him to really take this further. Very cool, Robbie. Well, those of you listening and watching, uh, make sure you guys be be praying for Rich and, uh, and Robbie and the whole Surf, Surf Church Collective. Amazing stuff that you guys are doing. I love that story with, with Dennis I didn't. I knew some of it, but not not all of it. And uh, you guys have done an amazing job to help change that that culture. Uh, you know, not only in, in Costa Rica and, and Central and South America, but now you know, uh, given a place for people to to both uh, you know be a surfer and a Christian, and 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 that's okay. And so it, so it's crazy. You know, sometimes we get. Go ahead. No, I'm saying, and if uh, people want to get some more information, uh, the surfchurchcollective.com. Um, or surf church. either way you can find it. And on there, we've got a map, a okay. world map. It's got pins in it of all the different um, churches that are surfer friendly churches that are wanting to partner with us. And so that's beginning to, it's beginning to grow. And so now, you know, we're in, in, in Europe and South Africa, Central America, Hawaii, you know, in the States, California, Florida. And so that's beginning to grow and people can see how um, it's, it's taking hold and then it, it's still in its infancy to a certain extent, but we're excited about the possibilities and it's, it's, it's really fun to see. That's awesome, Robbie. Uh, speaking of which, how, how do people um, follow and keep up, keep up with you and Salty Church um, specifically? Is there, um, you know, Instagram or webpage that, that people could check out, sign up for some, some emails, some, um, newsletters yeah the best the best place to do right now is to connect with the website you can kind of see that uh there is some social media that's happening um boy i should have been better prepared rich has been doing some putting out some videos probably through facebook is the best way to connect in through that okay. um but unfortunately we're right on the edge of really pushing out electronically and then all of a sudden the world gets put on hold and so that's evolving still right in infancy but yeah, he's um Rich is putting out some good stuff, and um, the social media is probably the best part. But you can connect through the website if there's if all else fails. Awesome, good stuff, guys. Stay tuned. Um, we got some great stuff coming out with these guys, Robbie. Before we end, we've got a I've got a surprise lightning round for you at the end with a a few cr- fun questions that I write up for each uh, podcast interview. Uh, but I wanted to talk about your family. Um, before we do that, because you've got a pretty cool story with your family. Um, I didn't even know, but you have six kids, which, which is a lot. You're, you know, and you're not Mormon. I know you're not, (laughs) but that's a lot of work. You're a full-time pastor. You've got six kids. You're involved with us. Um, you know, tell me how like that kind of came about. And, uh, I know, I think two of them are adopted and it's just a a really cool story. So we'd love to hear more about your family and your wife and the kids. I'll try to tell quick, but I think it's a pretty cool story. Um, with uh, three, I had three sons. Um, uh, ironically, my brother had three sons. My mom had four brothers, and we're like a very male-dominated family. But over the years, my wife kept feeling like, you know, God wants us to have a baby. God wants to have a baby girl. You know, we're going to have a baby girl. And I'm like, hey, ain't happening. There are no girls in my family. The last girl born in our, my family was 50 years ago. It was my mom, you know. And But then I feel like it was so – all right, maybe God's want calling us to have a baby girl. So um, she gets pregnant pretty easily, and uh, we're six, eight weeks pregnant, and go to the doctor, Thanks, and the, the baby didn't make it. So she has a miscarriage. So mm. Bad story, super not cool. But because of that, we oh, felt yeah. like, well, maybe, maybe, you know, it's, okay, God, why, and all that kind of stuff. And then pretty quickly – because of that, we started thinking about foster care and adoption and uh, trying to help the community and people that, you know, that kind of stuff. We got, we got um, qualified to do foster care and short version of that pretty quickly uh, within a year or so uh, we end up with a little girl, her name is Summer and uh, Summer's now 13 and early on 
she's six months old. We're going to adopt her. And we're like, all right, we're good. Thank you, God. We have our baby girl. All is well. Except that pretty soon after that, there's a couple in the church and they had a baby. There was a big problem with the, um, you know, Department of Children and Families. Big, they asked, hey, will you step in and help us for a little while to help with our baby girl? And we were like, sure, we'll help. It's just a couple of weeks. What harm could that be? Long story short, right. come to find out it was a bad situation. We need to help out for longer. And within, took about three years, but we ended up adopting Jolie. And so here I was summer, she's a year old. And in about a year and a half, next thing you know, this other little girl comes along. We're like, all right, cool. It's good. And we're trying to work through that, helping this family, going through the whole process and the court system, long story. And then in the middle of all of that, Nearly miraculously, nearly, uh, my wife gets pregnant. And all of a sudden now, it's like, hey, okay, what does this mean? And we go to the doctor, and sure enough, we have a baby. And then a little bit later, we find out it's a girl. And so, you know, it, wow. it, it's a real, a real calling. God says, you're going to have a baby girl. But we had no clue it was going to be three. Just, I mean, it's like, just, <laughs> all right. The Lord just multiplied. In in the in the you know number six here, three boys, three girls. Number six, uh, she's like a dream from heaven. She's the most awesome kid in the planet. Um, let me tie that back into another story. When I first met Dennis Leone, my little girl was three months old when we first met. When I was in his living room, he was this little baby girl. It's about six months old, and I, hey, you got a baby girl? Oh, me too. All right, what's what's your girl's name? Her name is Sayla. That's weird. That's exactly the name of my sixth baby, Sayla. So we had both named our baby girls the same name and had never that met before. So cool. It's a really odd name that comes from the Psalms. Stop and think about God. Yeah. Think about God's goodness. Yeah, it's not super popular. And No, but it, but from the Psalms, it's used like 87 times or something. And we both had named our daughters that. And so since then, Such a cool the whole name. thing with Dennis. And she's a gift from God, and it's amazing. And so anyways... There's a lot more to the story, but that's the short version. Yeah, six kids at home, it's it's a party. <laughs> wow, that's awesome, Robbie. I love that story with Dennis again. It just goosebumps. And, uh, you know, I think after he, hopefully we'll get him on one of these Christian Surfer Talk Story podcasts sooner or later. I think it'd be great to get him on and, and have a conversation with him. I think he is still pastoring full-time and passed off the national director reigns to, to, uh, to Damien, I believe. Now you're with your kids and your wife. Do are you the only one that surfs, or where do all of them surf? Um, we got we're beach beach people for sure. But um, one of the girls is really picking it up a little bit. Sayla is, but not a, for whatever reason. To my dismay, they are not actively surfing. So kind of bummed not about yet. It. It bummed about it a little bit, but that's okay. It'll be all right. And uh, sometimes your kids follow in your passion. Sometimes they don't. It'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure many surfer dads can relate to you, uh, but we'll, we'll be praying for them. Yeah, and I'm sure they're still uh, equally amazing as Salty and, and Sandy Feet as well. Um, Robbie, let's go into the uh, Holy Spirit lightning round. We've got seven minutes left with you on the podcast. Uh, so here we go. First question. Uh, this will be an easy one for you. Bodyboard, hand plane, shortboard, fish, longboard, foil, or SUP? Hey, I, I'm happy to be in the water, but if I'm riding something, the stand up is the only way to go. So I will, <laughs> I will defend, I will defend my choice with very few exceptions. You know, when it gets to be more than double overhead, you might want to switch up a little bit. If it's too windy, maybe. So I'll switch to a longboard. But I catch more waves, I catch longer waves, I catch better waves than most anybody in my part of the surfing world anyway. So anyways, I'll defend I don't doubt that. <laughs> I love that, Robbie. You always fly the, the SUP flag. Just surf anything and get out there. All right. Uh, second question for you. Least favorite wave in the world? Least favorite? Oof. Well, I mean, if, if size isn't a factor, in other words, flat, I mean, that's the worst kind of, you know, no surf or windy surf, choppy surf, that kind of stuff. Least favorite. Um, you know, any, anytime there's coral involved, I, you know, it freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> so when you're talking about... Especially when it's shallow. Yeah, when you're talking about sharp and coral, I start 
getting a little like, ah, I don't know, maybe, you know, get sketchy in there. That's not my favorite at all. Probably my least favorite. And although that tour normally would come with a really good break, it, being a Florida guy, it's not something I'm used to. Got it. That sounds, that's, that's a good answer. At least you've got a big board to fall on <laughs> and a paddle to help you walk, walk out of there. Awesome. Uh, favorite mission trip you've ever been on? Mission trip. Man, that's a tough one. Um, so, I don't know. Let me think. You know, Costa Rica is my passion for sure. Um, you know, I went to the conference in Australia, Sydney, and all of that is just mind-blowing and amazing. I love that. Um, all of Costa Rica has got to be my favorite. But with that notwithstanding, I guess, I think the most powerful is just going to Haiti because Haiti is so heavy and it is so intense and powerful, mm. life-changing in a lot of ways. It's hard for me to, you know, it's not a sure wow. thing at all. But because of what's happening there, I think it's, it's um, eye-opening and life-changing. It's powerful. Wow. De definitely need to be praying for Haiti. Good, good, uh, good answer, Robbie. Um, I know we talked about Christian surfers uh, and the conferences with Costa Rica and, um, and Australia. Where would you like to see a Christian surfers uh, international conference one day? Um, at, you know, there's no way in the world I would ask for it to be anywhere near Florida. It just is not going to happen. It probably shouldn't <laughs> be. So I get that. Oh, um, come on. We know you got some secret ways there you're not telling us oh, about. No, no, there's, there's some good stuff for sure, but it's so unpredictable. How do you do it, you know? And um, so you're talking about yeah. a, a location where we haven't done it yet or even if it's a repeat? Yeah, where we where we haven't been, yeah, where you would like to see it go. Uh, okay, so that rules out Costa Rica. Um, boy, let me think about this. And we've done California. We've done Hawaii already. Yep. Um, man, let me think about this. Yeah, even France. Done, I always thought I when I heard Bali, it was, back in yeah. So I thought France. Like, France yep, I didn't did even France. think I would like that. I was like, I don't know. I had some weird notion about France, and I loved France. France was awesome, but we've already done it there, so we can't do that. Um, so yeah, and we done Bali, right? We've done Bali yeah, way yeah. back in the day. We did Bali. Yeah. So what's left? Well, that's like the whole world almost. Um, <laughs> it's like the. It seems like the whole surf world, right? Well, we haven't done we haven't done anything Asia, have we? I don't. Uh, uh, well, Bali, Bali, Bali. Oh, yeah, I guess Asia. it counts, but it's not like Japan or even China. Um, yeah, Japan, China, that could be interesting. Yeah, that'd be that'd Gosh. be compelling in some ways, and maybe it's a need for it. I don't know. That'd be Taiwan. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Philippines. That. I love it. We'll we'll pray for another conference back in back in Asia, and we'll, we'll, we'll pray for all the CS movements um, that are there right now. Um, okay, second to last question. Um, the worst someone's dropped in <laughs> on you in CS. Worst burn in CS that's happened to you. Now, what do you mean at CS? <laughs> With, within surfing in CS, has anyone in CS, worst burn, has anyone dropped in on you? Casey just threw out BD on the last one, just to let you know. <laughs> it was actually pretty funny. I got to be honest. This is hard to say. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> we'll edit it out. Sometimes I'm the one who is doing the offending. <laughs> so I love your honesty. Because it, here's it's the, not just because you're on a stand-up. And part of, part of the stand-up thing is that I, you know, I'm catching further on the outside. And sometimes guys right. aren't seeing you coming, and I'm already have been on the way for a little bit, and you're you're there. So there are times when I've, you know, I've I've, I've gotten in trouble more often than than the other way around. So let me, I'm probably <laughs> I'm probably going to make somebody else's list. It's probably the problem, and I I feel bad. <laughs> we'll I'll, let you know. We'll keep you posted I'll if your just, name comes up. I'll just confess my sin right now. That's I'm just telling you. <laughs> Well, you seem like a fun and humble guy. Uh, so if I'm going to surf, or anyone going to surf with a stand-up paddleboard, it's going to be you, buddy. Well, so, I'll, I'll be careful. Um, uh, <laughs> awesome, Rob. We'll keep up the great work. Last question for you on this podcast. Uh, how can we be praying for you? Um, right now, with, <laughs> with the kids and the six kids, there's a lot going on at home. There's some, there's some 
you know, you get these phases of life that get tough and we're kind of in a hard season helping some of the kids with some specific issues and stuff. And, uh, yeah, the, the home stuff, I think personally would be it. The, the church stuff right now is going phenomenal. It's going well, even in the midst of this crisis and all the change and all that. So I got nothing I can really lift up there. Um, we're doing well, but at home right now, the kids stuff is, um, it's gotten hard recently. So yeah, I would say that. Gotcha. Awesome, Robbie. Well, hang in there. We know you're an amazing father, an amazing husband. Thank you for sharing uh, with us a little bit about your life. We hope that uh, you guys out there have gotten to know Pastor Robbie a little bit more. Make sure you uh, follow him and check him out online. And uh, can't wait to see you again, buddy, uh, when we're, whenever we're allowed to. And yeah, you, uh, can. you can drop in and burn me as much as you want. I'd be stoked to see you get some ways in front of me. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways. Uh, hopefully we get a chance to try it. So awesome, brother. Right. We love Thanks, you. Mark. God bless you. Thank you for making time for us. And uh, we can't wait to see you soon. You got Woo. it. See you guys.